hope I'm audible. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, so before I introduce about me or the, you know, the kind of company I represent and what is the work we do, I just thought I'll uh, piggy bank on a few of those company names which we see today, which you see it on the screen. If I may ask the audience, what do you think is a commonality across all these companies? They no longer exist, okay? They are? They are no relevant, beautiful. I think I really, really appreciate that choice of word there. They are no more relevant. So, may I summarize that into this slide? So, one of the things, uh, 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 you know, over a period of time, when we get into these presentations and et cetera, I've learned is that the lesser the words, the larger the picture, the impactful it, uh, it delivers on the audience. So I think this uh, uh, picture probably represents the story of these organizations which I've done. Before getting into any analysis and the diagnosis of what went right, what went not, not go right, also let me put out another set of companies. Okay, what is the commonality across these companies? They are leaders. They have created in you something really new, trendsetters, beautiful. Now, if, I, if purely from my personal opinion, if I were to look at what is the difference between the earlier set of companies and this set of companies, a lot of people attribute lack of technological adoption or transformation as a key uh, cause behind that downfall or be behind this rise. Because when we did a lot of analysis, a lot of reporting on what worked for these organizations, two very key things which have come out is, of course, uh, the talk of uh, uh, these three days, data, data fluency, their ability to adopt, adapt, and apply data in taking very critical decisions has been amazing. But there's one more thing which has come out, which is a continuous evolution in the organization. Now, when we talk about continuous evolution, the limited or sometimes the forefront aspect which channels our thought process is evolution in terms of technological adoption. But there's also one more very, very critical and important thing. It's just not about technological evolution. It's about employee upgradation. Most of these organizations today are there where they are, either at the top of the seat or probably as a fallen gent because the organizational evolution is just not technology driven, but it is also an employee driven. My entire conversation today is only going to focus on one very critical part of it, which is how centric as an organization we are when it comes to employees, just not in terms of what an employee brings, but in terms of making them skilled, better skilled, reskilled, and just not from a technological perspective, but from a holistic thought process. Uh, that was the story of today and yesterday. But a lot of data and surveys also possibly put across a sorry state for tomorrow as well. There are a lot more serious and grief, uh, uh, you know, griefful models which are coming out, highlighting one very critical piece, which is the skill gap. There's a tremendous skill gap in what industry needs today, and most of you represent that industry. I'm sure you, uh, you know, resonate with what I'm trying to share right now, and what our actually workforce of today are. Now, it, not just for today. A is about adapting to the technological changes, you know, uh, the data changes which are happening in today's world, but also being prepared for what could come tomorrow. Now, when we talk about as simple, you know, when the reports talk about it, probably one of the area which I would like to really uh, look at is the area of meta. Meta is seen as a huge buzzword, whether it's going to be a tremendous uh, super success or it's going to be a fad, all those opinions secondary. Are we ready for that? Are the workforce ready for that? At a mindset, at a skill set level, I think that is a fundamental root cause which is probably made an organization successful or certain organizations which could not write the change have also fallen because of this gap area. Now, why am I so uh, focused on this part of uh, uh, 
you know, employees being so centric and their skills being so important. When a change comes, the first, or when a transformation needs to come, the first adoption happens at a leadership level, at a, at a management level. But the percolation of it at an organizational wide level is the one which actually transforms organizations. That means that particular transformation is no more limited only to a CEO of the company or a director of the company, but has to be owned and be prepared by the last mile of the last employee in the organization. That is a fundamental uh, 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 element which where the focus should probably be going forward. Now, some of the risks which organizations have been expressing due to the lack of upskilling of the employees is one, of course, there is a strong talent drain happening. When we talk about talent drain, we refer it to talent leaving organizations. There's also something even more deeper to that. There's a lot of insecurity among the uh, uh, talent which is there in the organization. What is it? It could be the automation of the jobs. It could be replacement uh, insecurity. It could be a market-driven insecurity or a pandemic-driven insecurity. But the key thing there is we are losing talent because there is a gap between what the talent is being applied into the uh, work, uh, onto the job vis-a-vis -vis what the talent actually today poses which is also leading to talent gap. You speak to any of the HR heads of business heads of organizations, one very standard and a constant statement they refer to is that, you know what, there's so much of gap between what we need and what the talent is coming in. Even though the person is an experienced person, and I myself as a business face that, in spite of an experienced uh, 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 workforce coming into the organization for a specific need of the job, still, these two words of talent drain and you know, attrition, talent drain, talent gap, skill gap, is a very commonplace conversation. Now, we all know organizations are built through this talent. Organizations are, the growth is hinged around the, uh, the talent which we have in the organizations, the manpower we have, the skill which we have in the organization, which is, has a potential risk of leading to growth paralysis, which is already visible in, in a lot of those companies which I've shared earlier. More importantly, like that lady has mentioned, they are becoming relevant. The capabilities itself are becoming obsolete. Now, if this is a trend for today, understand the, kind, the pace at which the change is happening. Over the last couple of days, you've seen tremendous models which are emerging. The kind of application people have been talking about it. The fundamental question there is, at the talent level, are we ready towards that? So, consultative conversation from my side now. So far, I've only focused on the problem area. As a consultative uh, uh, you know, conversation, we also look, tend to look at what kind of solutioning we should be looking at when we talk about uh, such kind of problem areas. My, I think the first thing, whenever a transformation, whenever a change comes in, a very common phrase we hear, Let's try the change. Prior to uh, 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 this particular business which I'm handling right now, for a very long period of time, I've been a teacher. So probably a teacher in me, uh, you know, uh, uh, an educationist in me comes out as, at a conversation. The grammatical usage of the, or the phrase of the word tied the change is you drift with the change. That means you move along with the change which is coming in. A lot of pioneer organizations possibly do not believe in this phase. They actually believe in the phase of write the change. That means you're not just going by the change. You're anticipating, you're moving, you're probably uh, at ahead of the tide so that you are actually riding the change and you're no more just flowing by the change. Now, why do I say this? A few years back, and I, I, I did my MBA from uh, you know, one of the prestigious uh, institutions in our country, I am, Coricord. So, and I keep giving this example, 10 years back, and I did it in marketing, when I was learning marketing, I never learned this concept called as digital marketing. Today, when I talk to my marketing team, they forget about digital marketing, forget about, they talk about programmatic marketing, they talk about algorithmic marketing, they talk about some kind of uh, a marketing which, uh, where the entire uh, uh, bidding around the keywords, everything is happening so algorithmically. For me, suddenly, I mean, my, the first question I ask is, okay, so what are you marketing end of the day? Who is marketing it? So the, the change which has happened, and if I don't adapt to that change today, two things are going to happen. One, 
I'm not able to leverage the advantage of what a lot of these technological revolutions have brought into our lives. While we talk about it being the bane and boon, there are a lot of advantages it has brought into force. Second, from a talent perspective, I would not be able to either hire the right talent or, or probably upgrade the right talent. So I think the, rather than going by the channel, okay, it has happened three years back, it has happened four years back, so I'm, if I don't go there, it is no more a point of parity, I'm going to lose the race, is one way of looking at things. Anticipating that something is able to come over the next few years and able to be there when it comes in is probably the much more uh, uh, you know, stronger way of looking at organization. That's where such kind of talent becomes very important. Oh, I know it's a very uh, little disturbing uh, slide there. You change employees. No, I didn't, never meant that. I think the, the, the focus here is also, like I was mentioning it earlier, whenever there is a, a talent gap, or whenever we believe there's a new skill or a new technology which we would like to implement or new models which are coming up, the first thing, the first immediate probably the mindset we get into would be let me hire somebody. Okay, let me probably hire a data scientist. Let me hire somebody who understands, in, in my own terminology I've used, a programmatic marketing. Somebody who you understand is applying certain things. From that shift of probably changing the employee or bringing in another person to solve our problem, because if that's the case, we will keep seeing a ballooning of organizations in the quantum of size, and half of the employees becoming obsolete because they are not in trend with what our need for tomorrow is. The focus is shift on, rather than changing the employees, how do we change the, how do we make this change an employee-centric? Rather than hiring new set of people, how do we impart those newer skills to our current employees so that they are ready for what is needed for today and for tomorrow? I think that is probably an important shift some of the organizations have to take to look at employee from a different conversation. And this is very, very relevant in a lot of new organizations like the list which you've seen, those blue whale organizations which you saw earlier, when you talk about Ubers, etc. Their, their, their entire endeavor, a lot of those solutions are come, have come through because their employees have upgraded themselves in terms of skills, in terms of mindset, to be ready for what even Uber management could not foresee. And I think that, that is probably a, a, a go-to forward because we all understand and believe such revolutions are not created by one or two people. It's an organization shift. I believe yesterday uh, uh, one of our uh, speakers was mentioning that when a shift is happening, the shift has to happen at an organizational wide level, not just in certain pockets by bringing in or removing certain uh, you know, uh, employees in the organization. And of course, I've been harping on these words, upgrading skills. It's a very commonplace conversation. A lot of businesses, a lot of mites have been built on upskilling. And it's a huge global phenomena today, continuous learning, upskilling, etc. We have been talking all about that. But the real key there is just not upgrade skills. This is what I call a skills plus plus. A lot of reports don't just talk about the skill gap at a technological level or at a data understanding level. They also talk about very important three aspects of, uh, you know, of a human skill level, which are cognitive, critical thinking, and ability to understand humans or deal with humans. And this specifically have arised post-pandemic as a skill gap areas organizations are perceiving today in their, in, in their companies. So while the focus happens a lot on technology, on understanding the data elements which are happening, you know, the skills surrounding that, the probably area organization should also focus is on a lot more holistic upskilling of an employee. Problem solving, that means today when we talk about, uh, 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 in fact there is one, uh, uh, training program which we've been, which we work with along with KPMG. And that is creating techno managers in organization. We have talked about technologists, specialists, we talk about managers who manages things, but that particular idea, the idea behind that is to blend both of them so that when, a, when, a, when other particular employee is trained, 
they are not just ready for one facet of a missing link, but they're actually trained in a 360 degrees uh, model. So I think the key, once again, is just not to look at at a skills level, but look at them at a holistic level. Uh, one, one more common trend we see, you know what, something new is coming into the market, you know, something has come yesterday, something has come today, okay, let's, let's plan, uh, let's, let's, let's probably train people on the latest technology. It is very, very relevant at a personal level also. There was one writer, you know, one content writer in my uh, team. She realized, you know, what something is, uh, 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 everybody today is talking about uh, uh, the design, design thinking, UI, UX, etc. So let me start learning that so that I'm being relevant. And understand the key here, like, you know, like the lady has mentioned, everywhere one perspective is see from an organization, from an employee perspective, they or he, you know, I have to be relevant to the context of what is happening in just not in this business, even for, the, for other businesses also. That relevancy is a very, very key word. Sometimes very loosely ignored. I have my job today, so I'm happy is one perspective. But am I relevant for, not, for today and tomorrow on the kind of evolution which is happening is an even more important question. So whenever the relevancy comes into picture, People always go back to getting themselves skilled on what is, uh, you know, what has happened yesterday or what is bust today. But what is also important there is, it is not a one-off event of skilling. Upgradation, when we talk about mobile upgradation, software upgradation, it's just not one event which happens once in a lifetime. Education is probably one such event. When I talk about education, formal education, like when you go to you know, a, a, a business school or you go to a, a, a bachelor's, that itself today is changing. People are talking about multi-grade education, you know, multi-grade formal degrees also. So when it comes to uh, uh, learning, when it comes to uh, adopting or when it comes to developing skills, it's a continuous activity. I, am, I was forced to go back and do a course to do entire learning on the new age way of doing marketing. Because what I learned 10 years back, in spite of being learned from one of the best teachers in the world, I, is, it's no more relevant today. So I think that, that, that willingness, that, that, that uh, uh, thought process among as an individuals, and it's, it's, it's not just restricted to one level of organization. You know what, I would like to teach all my managers or probably engineers, or probably you know, product guys who are probably at lower part of my company in the, in the hierarchy, they have to be upskilled. No, upskilling is a need right from the CX of an organization to an investor, to a founder, to every employee of an organization. At a different level, there's a different way you look at organization. We talk about digital transformations. We talk about you know, digital businesses coming into picture. We talk about transformative uh, you know, thought process which have to come into it. If we are not adapt with, if we are not you know, embraced with what is happening in terms of uh, uh, the industry, in terms of skilling ourselves. Skilling is, is uh, as I mentioned, one is understanding it from a business level. Second is also from a skill level, from a tool level. So the point here is it has to be a continuous and it has to always be in lookout for what is next rather than what has already happened. Uh, let me bring our side of the story right now. I represent ideology and we have, we, 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 we come from an educational background. So probably when I, when I always make uh, uh, learning, education, keeping it employee centric, you know, keeping it at the skilling, etc. My entire viewpoint comes in from the fact that we are an education organization. Our whole endeavor and whole journey has been in educating, uh, you know, uh, people. In fact, belong to a massive education group, Global University Systems based of London, which today owns almost 50 universities globally. One of the pioneer universities like London School of Business and Finance, uh, University of Law, in India, UPS, Pearl Academy, etc., and Ideology is the online learning vertical of GUS. Again, you know, we've been in existence for the last uh, uh, four, five years, purely training students who are there globally, and the whole focus has been towards training working professionals in enabling with them with skills which will help them to a stay relevant and b. Uh, help organizations 
grow organizations because when employees are skilled, the organizations, uh, you know, tremendously grow. And that has been the kind of uh, uh, experience we have seen. And our model has always been simple. I think the center here is what industry needs. What is the kind of change? So one of the things we always, whenever we are looking at any training program, and all of them happens online, you know, we, the ours is an online uh, learning, and today, of course, that's, that's the uh, uh, one more, uh, you know, buzzword which is going on, online learning as well. So whenever we, we are developing a program, the ethos is very clear. The first, the, 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 this program has to be designed by an industry person and delivered by, industry, by practicing you know, the, uh, professionals. The reason is very simple. You really want to learn it from the horse mouth. For a, for a learner, it's important. Yes, I might be an education company with so many universities, which brings its own dimension to any learning program. But the application of it, when it comes to, uh, uh, for a learner, or for an employee, or for anybody who's getting upskilled, the relevance there comes in when it is being taught by somebody from industry. So one very key area which we focus on is each of the programs to be created, designed, and delivered by industry professionals. Yes, plus there's also always an academic validation or accreditation which will, because it's an education. Education also has that element of structuring around it, the kind of curriculumization of that, uh, you know, behind it. So that's a place where the academia comes into picture. So it's a proper blend of industry and academia to help the workforce to be upskilled and across three very important segments. Whenever we talk about upskilling, as I mentioned earlier, and it has been uh, reverberated last couple of days by a lot of uh, 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 colleagues out here and a lot of uh, uh, speakers out here, a lot many times technology upskilling is focused on pure plate tech. Data science, AI, ML, cybersecurity, cloud computing, full stack, you name it, and you know, there's, there's a plethora of technologies that are coming in, and Python, et cetera, and the skilling happening around that. But I think the world is shifting to one more dimension, and I'm, I, I'm sure a lot of you appreciate that, from a pure play to an application of that to certain specific domains. One of the interesting programs which we've been working with the University of Law is AI in law. Now, probably that's, today, we, I mean, when it comes to legal, AI in law is, seems to be a very uh, uh, a strange combination. But a lot of contract draftings, a lot of this today are being done programmatically. Now, if employees do not possess that skill, if lawyers who are coming out of law schools do not understand and have that kind of a skill, an organization needs such kind of uh, you know, ability to, to, uh, add, uh, to probably do such kind of uh, work, there is a gap which comes into picture, then as an organization you are forced to go through a talent gap and then a talent drain and then the entire story around it. So whenever we are looking at upskilling employees, one of the things we, at, at least at ethos level, we wanted to focus is on, one is teaching pure play technology, but the key there is customizing it as an application towards or you know, ability to create that ability to apply it to various verticals logistics and supply chain. Able to teach somebody how to apply analytics into logistics and supply chain is a very, very key, key you know, area right now you know, in terms of upskilling. Healthcare informatics. These are all words which have been floating around, but understand, one of the things we need to understand is that the workforce has to be skilled towards this specific domains, not just as a gen generic understanding of what is this technology about. In fact, there is, uh, I'm sure Unreal Engine is, uh, you guys have heard about it, it's a very, very popular gaming engine, you know, right from PUBGs, your Fortnites, etc., are created to Unreal. Some of the programs which, which we are offering to our students, to our learners, and anybody, it could be an employee, a working profession, the minute they come into learning, they become a student. So hence my connotation as a teacher coming as students. When we talk about learn, some of these programs, we were talking about uh, uh, space designing or architecture visualization using such engines in a meta environment. That means you're able to experience the uh, 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 architecture the architect is creating and their ability to create that kind of an environment is exactly the skill which is being taught. Now imagine such kind of skills are they prevalent today? Are they a commonplace today? The answer is no. 
but is that where the organizations and the technology and the world is shifting? The answer is yes. So, to summarize, I think the, the, the key element for each one of us when we talk about the outcome as a transformation, the outcome as growth, the outcome as being a leader, at a process and an input level, the focus should be on those three important words. The learning or the upskilling has to be continuous. It's for today, it's just not for yesterday, it's also for tomorrow. Talent is the key which will result you in such kind of transformation. So they being ready, both in terms of the skills and in terms of the entire mindset is very, very important investment. And, I keep, and the word I've used there is investment. The investment organizations have to do so that the benefits they reap for future are ready for them. All right? Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, your patient listening and open for any kind of conversations.